Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today let me show you how to build the best $400 gaming PC for beginners. So I understand that not everyone has thousands of dollars to shell out on a gaming PC nowadays. So the main goal of this build was to provide something that was below $500 more or less focused on the value aspect of building a gaming PC, but at the same time, it not only looks good, but you could upgrade on over time if you wanted to throw in stronger components for a better PC gaming experience. So in today's build guide, I'll be showing you guys how to put together this computer, the parts going inside of it, how to install windows, how to set up drivers, and then the 1080p gaming benchmarks for this computer, as well as some overclocking, because you can do that on this computer and get you some extra performance. And then my final thoughts on this $400 gaming PC. If you're looking into a gaming PC of this price and caliber, but you're unable to build it, and all of the pre-builds you found around this price range are just simply aren't that good, then let me tell you a little bit about PC Bros. If you're familiar with Toasty Bros on YouTube, then they also go by the name PC Bros on their pre-built gaming PC website. And what's really cool about all of their pre-built computers is just like the gaming PC builds that I push out on this channel, all of those pre-builds focus on value and performance because they're backed by tech content creators who know what they're doing. Seriously, check out the lineup of computers on their website. They start out from $215 and go all the way up into the thousands. So there should be a pre-built computer for anybody on their website. Which speaking of, they are offering a 5% off discount code, that being Santa5 on their website, where you can get 5% off your order. So if you wanna check out a pre-built gaming PC brand that is backed by tech content creators who know what they're doing, then be sure to check out PC Bros using the link at the top of the description. Okay, so to build this $400 computer, all you're gonna need is a Phillips head screwdriver, a Phillips head one screwdriver for your M.2 SSD that your Windows and everything else is gonna be stored on, then an eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive for your Windows bootable media device, which is what you'll use to install Windows onto this computer, and then finally, a pair of scissors to open anything. So for our processor and graphics card, we're going with the Ryzen 5 5600G. And I know you may be asking, what do you mean by graphics card? Where is the graphics card in this build? Well, it's inside of this chip because this is an APU, AKA an all-in-one processor. So on the CPU end of this, it's just a regular Ryzen 5000 series, six core, 12 threaded CPU that is overclockable. But on the GPU end, this has integrated Vega 8 graphics hence the name APU. So whenever we finish building this computer with this motherboard, the actual display cable is gonna be coming out from the motherboard end of the gaming PC to the monitor, and not where there'd typically be a graphics card. Which speaking of, we're using the Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi motherboard. And I know what you're asking. Why are you using a B450 motherboard with a 5000 series CPU? Well, you can actually use the 5600G in this motherboard because is if you see right here, it says AMD Ryzen 5000 desktop ready. So this already comes with the latest BIOS update out of the box for these Ryzen 5000 series APUs. So we're getting the best budget APU on the market with one of the best budget B450 motherboards. And that is why this $400 gaming PC is gonna be so good for the money. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and unbox your motherboard. Here you should find your IO shield and Wi-Fi antenna sticks. Make sure you have this on hand. You will need it for later on the build, as well as this. This right here is a SATA cable. You don't need this for this build. Now let's go ahead and unbox our motherboard. So first thing, let's go ahead and remove these brackets here from the motherboard so we can install our CPU cooler when we get around to it. There we go. And now let's go ahead and install our CPU into this socket. So first thing first, go ahead and open up this latch, unbox your CPU, and make sure to locate where the gold triangle is on the CPU and line it up with the triangle on the CPU socket, which should be right here. So go ahead and place this in. It should just drop in naturally, give it a little shake. That means all the pins are lined up with the socket and then press down this lever. So this is what your CPU should look like in the socket. The name Ryzen should be alongside this little black piece right here. 
And then while you're here, go ahead and install your CPU cooler for the 5600G, which should come with the box. And note, there's already thermal paste that comes with this CPU cooler, so no need to provide your own. So line up the four holes with the socket backplate here with the CPU cooler. Make sure everything touches down, press it in a little bit, and then screw in each side halfway. All right, we've got contact with the threads. So now let's go ahead and continue screwing this in all the way. And with all of these screws in all the way, you should be able to pick up your motherboard by the CPU cooler and be all good. And one more thing, don't forget to hook up your CPU cooler cable with the CPU fan header on the motherboard. So that way your motherboard knows when to turn on the CPU cooler. And with that, that is the CPU and CPU cooler done. So real quick, let me tell you what RAM and storage we're using in this system, which is just a regular two by 16 kit of RAM. I just chose this RGB kit from Olawi because it was good for the money and it looks good, but the speed is 3,200 megahertz, which is good enough for this build. And then for the storage, we're using a single 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD from Neo Forza that I got for about 40 bucks on Newegg. It does the job, TLC, comes with an SLC cache controller, and yeah, it'll do fine for this $400 computer. Okay, so to install the RAM, go ahead and open up slots A2 and B2 on the motherboard, which are the two far most left slots separated by one from the CPU cooler. And this RAM will only go in one way because as you can see, both of these strips right here on the RAM are different sizes and same on the motherboard. All right, that's in. And make sure each of these have a very firm click in the motherboard. There you go. Both of these are firmly in. Now let's go ahead and install our M.2 SSD. So right here on this topmost M.2 slot is where we're gonna put it in. Use your Phillips head one screwdriver this time. Unscrew this screw right here. There you go. Then drop this in. Again, this will only go in one way because there's a little notch right here that'll line up with the M.2 SSD. That plugs in pretty easily. Press this down, screw this in, and we'll bam. Okay, before you get too excited and open up the front panel, let's turn around the computer and open up the back side because there's some important bags we probably need to open up. And I was right. So here's a whole heap of cables. You will have to mess with later on, but here's a little baggie that contains the screws we'll need to install our motherboard, our power supply, and anything else in this computer. So have that on hand. Ooh, is there a case manual? There might not be a case manual. No worries, because you're watching this video. I'll show you what to do. But more or less, if you watched any of my build guides, all micro ATX PC cases install the same. So there's nothing too huge to worry about. So right here is a whole hodgepodge of cables, which don't get intimidated by this. I'll tell you what each of these cables mean. And in fact, some of them are actually already hooked up. So if you're wondering what this green thing is right here, this is a built-in fan and RGB controller for this PC case, which fortunately already has the two front fans on the PC case hooked up. So the two fan headers are here and the RGB, and yeah, that's pretty neat. So here's where your actual front IO cables are for this PC case. Here are all the individual pins for like your power button, your reset switch, your power switch LED, and that sort of stuff. Then here is your USB header for the top of the PC case. If you wanna plug in a flash stick or anything like that. Here is um, your HD audio connector for if you were say plugging in headphones or a microphone into this computer. And then this blue guy right here is your USB 3.0 connector. And then as for these cables right here that are coming from this RGB and fan controller, this will let you control the RGB from this controller on your motherboard, this little five volt RGB header here. And this SATA connector is going to be power for this RGB and fan controller. So we'll go ahead and plug these up too when we get the chance. So these are your front IO cables. This will go into your motherboard and this is the power and RGB for the RGB and fan controller, which will use the power supply and one port on the motherboard for. So go ahead and separate these out. I know it might look a little bit intimidating at first, but just follow through me on this. So before you put your motherboard into the PC case, we need to install the IO shield, which is this silver thing right here. So there's two sides to this. There is a flat side with no sticky bits and then there's a slightly protruded side with some sticky bits. So you want these bits that kind of go out to be facing inward, and you want this kind of like protruded side of the IO shield coming out. That way it can go into the PC case. So line it up. Just gonna wanna snap in the, each of these corners. You'll get it, you'll know what this looks like. All right, that took a little bit of force, but now that's in. And if you're wondering which way to put this, 
You can imagine as if your motherboard is already lined up with the PC case. And here you can kind of see these ports are gonna match up with this once this is in the PC case. So before you put your motherboard into the PC case, of course, make sure you have the IO shield installed, but make sure you have all the standoffs covered for your motherboard. So in this case, there are six and on our motherboard, there are also six holes we can cover, excluding this one. However, one thing to note is that if we were to line up all the holes from this motherboard with the standoffs on the PC case, one of them is out of line. So if you look on your motherboard, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. There are six standoffs in the case that can cover at least this, these six holes on the left side of the motherboard. This one we're just gonna have to leave, but this standoff right here is gonna have to move on the PC case because this hole here on the motherboard is lower than this hole. And as we can see here, this standoff here needs to move down by one peg. So let's go ahead and unscrew this, put this down one hole. Now we have our six standoffs that can be covered by the PC case for our motherboard. So now let's go ahead and drop this in, line it up with the IO shield, press it in a little bit, make sure we can line up the threads of the standoffs with the holes on the motherboard. And now let's go ahead and start screwing it in. So these are the screws that you wanna use with the motherboard in those standoffs. And now let's go ahead and start screwing these in. One thing though, don't screw in all of the screws into the standoffs all the way. We wanna kinda of screw them in halfway because once we have them all in, then we'll tighten each screw. That way we put equal pressure on the motherboard. Okay, we have all six screws that we can screw into the standoffs, screwed in halfway. So now let's go ahead and tighten each individual one. There you go. Go on the other side of the motherboard, tighten this one all the way, go on the other side, tighten that, rinse and repeat, and you should be all good to go. One more thing though, we have this spare fan cable here from one of the case fans in the Gambius case we went with, and we could plug this in right here where it says fan header on our motherboard. This will also only go in one way. There we go, let's tuck that in. All right, let's go ahead and install our power supply, which I've chosen the Enermax Marble Brawn 550 watt 80 plus bronze modular power supply. So if you look here on the box, there are these like ports here on the power supply where you can plug in your own power supply cables into, which is kind of nice. So let's open this up. Here is our wall socket cable. We'll need that for when we finally boot up the computer. Here's the actual power supply. There we go. Then here is a baggie full of all of those cables I was talking about. So right here is our CPU and motherboard power cable always hooked up to our power supply. And then here are our optional cables. So this here is a PCIe power cable. Say if we had a dedicated graphics card in this PC, we hook this up to one of these ports here on the power supply to have that powered on but we don't have a dedicated graphics card in this build. So we'll save this when you do decide to upgrade on this later on. But what we do need is a SATA power cable for the RGB controller in our PC case. Yeah, right here. We're gonna need one of these to turn on this RGB power connector. So let's plug that one power supply cable we do need to make this system possible into the SATA port right here. Again, for our RGB controller. And we're pretty much ready to go. And one more thing, we are given this little baggie here in the power supply box. This contains screws we'll need to install the power supply into the PC case. Okay, so to install this power supply into the PC case, make sure the fan side is facing down. Go into this back compartment in the PC case, kind of slide it into place. And then here on the back side of the PC case, you want to line up the holes on the power supply to the holes designated in the PC case. Let's go ahead and screw this in a little bit. All right, that's in, let's get the other three. There you go. And if you're wondering what this switch here on the back of the power supply does, this will let you know if your system is ready to turn on or not. For the moment, it's set to the O, this is fine. But when we're ready to boot up this computer with the power supply cord plugged in, we'll flick that to the line. But for the moment, it's fine to stay on the O. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the front IO cables for this gaming PC into our motherboard where the front IO pins are, which you can find in the motherboard manual. We've got our power switch, our reset switch, our HDD LED, and our power LED plus and minus. And where to plug in what can be found again in the motherboard manual. Just take your time with it. I'll go ahead and do this. And there we go. One thing to note, there isn't a reset switch in this front IO header combo that we have because I believe that is going towards the RGB controller actually in the back of this PC case. Now let's go ahead and plug in our USB 3.0 header, this big blue chunky boy into where it says USB 3.0 in our motherboard. This will only go in one way because there's a little notch on the top of it, easy. 
Now let's go ahead and plug in our USB 2.0 header, which is one of our USB ports on the top of the PC case, where a USB 2.0 header is on our motherboard, which again, you can find the location of that in your motherboard manual. This will only go in one way. Now let's go ahead and plug in our HD audio connector into our motherboard. This will also go in one way and the location for it can be found on the motherboard manual, but most of the time it's gonna be on the far left of the motherboard. And there you have it. Now let's go ahead and take care of the plugs that are coming out of the RGB and fan controller from the back of the PC case, starting with our ARGB fan header, which will go to the motherboard side. And right here where it says DLAD2, this is where we're gonna plug in our ARGB header. This will only go on one way because there's two pins here and one pin there. Same with our connector. And there you go. Then as for this final SATA power connector that we need to use the power on the whole controller, this is really simple. Use that SATA power cable that we plugged in earlier into the power supply, connect the two ends, and there you go, easy. Now let's take care of the two final power connectors needed to power on this computer. Starting with our motherboard power connector, this big guy. There's a little latch here on the connector which will combine with this and it'll only go in one way. There you go, make sure that's in all the way. Lastly, let's take care of this CPU power cable, which doesn't say CPU on it, but it's a four x four connector just joined by one. This will also only go in one way here on the top right or top left. There you go, that is in all the way. And believe it or not, that is all you need to do to build this computer. So with all that, let me go and show you how to install Windows, drivers, and then how to get to gaming. Okay, and with all that, let's go ahead and boot up the computer for the first time, but let's go through a little checklist to make sure you're all set to go. So first things first, make sure you have the Wi-Fi antennas screwed into the back of the PC case where the motherboard is, so you can have access to the internet when we boot into Windows, so we can start installing stuff, or if you wanna plug in an ethernet cable from the back of the computer to your router, then that's fine as well. And then of course, don't forget to plug in your keyboard, your mouse. Don't forget especially to plug in the HDMI cable from the back of your motherboard to the monitor you're using. And then lastly, don't forget the power cable that you got from your power supply box, that being this one. It'll go from the back of the power supply to a wall socket. And then finally, switch the power supply switch from the O to the line. And then let's go ahead and plug in our Windows bootable media device and see what happens. We'll put this into a USB 3.0 port right here. Make sure that's in, there you go. And, ooh, that is good. Okay, if you see any sort of screen come up after you boot up your computer, then that's good. That means everything is alive. Though I am reusing this motherboard from a previous build, so that's why you saw this screen. But really what you should boot up to and see is the Windows installation screen, which you'll see right now. So after turning on your computer, you should reach this screen, which has a purplish, bluish Windows screen. Hit next, hit install now. So here's where you're gonna put in your Windows 10 key, but you can get one for pretty cheap from vipsedkey.com, where I got this Windows 10 Pro key for 17 bucks using my discount code VIPSCATTER. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and I'll be right back with you guys. There you go, and gotta give this a moment. All right, I accept license and terms, hit next, custom install. There is our SSD, hit next, and now we just wait. Okay, and with all that installing done, let's go ahead and set up Windows, choose your country, choose your keyboard layout, don't need a second keyboard. So here's where you connect to your internet, but for the simplicity's sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna click I don't have internet because it's faster. Continue with limited setup. And you can name this whatever you want. I'll call this subscribe to Scatterbolt. And then for the password, I'm gonna put something, put something. And then for each of these security questions, I'm gonna put like this video, comment on this video. And again, subscribe to Scatterbolt. There you go. Then for all of these privacy settings, just disable each of them. You don't need them. They're just extra processes that'll run in the background. Hit accept. Don't need Cortana. And there you have it. So here's how to install the graphics card drivers for this PC. So go ahead and search up AMD graphics card drivers on Google search and click on the link that has the amd.com link. Now from there, you can either use the auto detect tool, which will automatically install the correct drivers for your system. But since we already know the graphics we're using for this PC, let's go ahead and select the right driver for it. So click on processors with graphics, then select the 5600G, and then click on the Windows 10 installation button. 
And then from there, let it run, just hit next, let it do its thing. And then let's go ahead and restart the system. But right as that's happening, be sure to spam the F2 or delete key on your keyboard as your system is rebooting so you can enter the BIOS. And here, let's go ahead and set the XMP profile to the first profile or whatever that is for your motherboard. And once we do that, you'll ensure that your RAM is running at its full advertised speed so you can get the most performance out of this system. So with all that, you are finally ready to start gaming on this computer. Okay, real quick, before we get to the benchmarks, let me show you how you can overclock the integrated graphics in this computer, which I highly recommend you do. This can get you an extra four to five frames per second on average on any game you play, and it'll automatically apply every time you start up this computer. And I really recommend it for the performance benefit and the extra heat that those integrated graphics being overclocked will produce will not affect the stock cooler much. So in order to do this, download Ryzen Master. I'll have a link to it in the description below and then switch from basic view to advanced view. Then go to the game mode profile, click on auto overclocking and set the iGPU megahertz to 2400 megahertz and the voltage to 1.3 volts. And then hit apply and a test and that'll restart your computer. And then every time you boot up your computer, you have the option to either start or not start Ryzen Master. But for me, just click it to yes every time. And that way you can have this overclocked profile on your integrated graphics apply every single time you boot up this computer. And again, it's free performance on the table. It takes a few clicks and it's free. And that's what you'll be seeing in the benchmark section now. Okay, Apex Legends, I'll show you guys the, uh, oh, this is a crossbow. I, how do you do this? Well, um, look at the FPS meter on the top left. There you have it. This is the FPS range. It's gonna be 60, locked at 60. Now, does it look the best? Nah, but you only spent $400, so what is there to complain about? It doesn't look that terrible. Where's the ammo? Oh my goodness, give me the ammo. Nope, that's not it. This is how you can tell I don't play VR games. Anyways, there you have it, 60 frames per second. Let me show you the graphics settings. Pretty much everything is on low, but the trick to keeping this at 60 frames per second is to have, right here where it says adaptive resolution FPS target, keep that at 60 frames per second, and that'll actively modify the anti-aliasing, I believe, to make sure this stays at a constant lock 60 frames per second. And it doesn't look too half bad for this budget of a computer. Okay, gentlemen, um, I am not joking here. I'm gonna legitimately try to run Cyberpunk 2077 on this PC. And the only way it's gonna happen is through AMD Fidelity FX, which luckily came out and now has FSR 2.1. So maybe this won't look as bad as FSR 1.0, do I have my hopes high? No. But do I want to see what happens? Yes. Anyways, FPS meter is on the top left. <laughs> hey, we're just going to start with everything at low. Off low. I, you know what? I don't even want to see the frame rate. I just want to see what it looks like. Off, medium, ray tracing, obviously off. All right. What do you think? Is it going to look like a PS1 game? I don't know. We just need at least 60 frames per second by any means. And yes, this game is definitely above this PC's performance category. So just keep that in mind. This is not the best for the absolute cream of the crop AAA titles. Although it did run Modern Warfare 2. We're getting, ooh, 35 frames per second. And that's with everything. This is at 1080p, by the way. If we shoved it down to 720p, maybe we could be getting 720, but uh, this is Cyberpunk at its best. I mean, yes, Cyberpunk Maxed Out is a beautiful looking game, but in my opinion, this looks better. It's kind of like, uh, what is it, The Room? The, the dude who's like, oh, hi, Mark, that guy? You know, like when a movie is so bad, it's good. This is an instance where I think the graphics look so subpar that it's actually art. <laughs> this is the combination of FSR 2.1 at ultra performance, and then this at the lowest settings. I mean, it's running. A $400 computer is indeed running Cyberpunk. Uh, but yeah, we're getting not 60. That's uh, maybe if we got out of the city, we'd maybe touch 50, but <laughs> 60 ain't happening. I'm calling it, I'm calling it. I. This is just a C. This, this isn't an actual like, I'm not, oh, there's some guys. I'm not actually telling you you should run Cyberpunk on this computer, but you could if you wanted. Okay, so I'm looking for some redemption here in Elden Ring. We have quality set to low at 1080p. If this works, I'm gonna be pretty satisfied. Anyways, FPS meter again is on the top left. Watch it and the frame times. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not. 
not. Maybe not. Elden Ring, this is definitely an... Well, I mean, it's... Yeah, this is a no. You'd probably want a console over this for a game like Elden Ring. Yeah, I... I <laughs> this is where you'd want a dedicated graphics card, even though we do have that overclocked integrated graphics Vega 8 iGPU. Yeah, I, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. <laughs> I, I... At least we know. At least we know. If you wanted to play Elden Ring, not gonna happen. Well, it's happening, just maybe not at the quality you expect out of a gaming PC. Okay, here's Forza Horizon 5. Let me quickly show you the game settings real quick. Running at low preset. And funny enough, I did some testing. Fidelity FX and FSR don't actually help out the frame rate. So we're leaving both of those off. And I mean, this is running at 1080p. If you were to run it at 720p, it'd probably hit 60, but this is hitting a fairly consistent like 43 to 46 frames per second. And to be completely honest with you, for a $400 computer, I'd expect it a little bit better. If we could have gotten just maybe like 10 or more frames per second, then we could be hitting that 60 FPS mark, and that would be very nice. Yeah, like there's no huge frame drops. If you look at the frame time meter on the left, it's all pretty consistent. We just need like another 10 or so frames per second so this to be decently playable, in my opinion. Because this is already at low preset. But yeah, <laughs> we're going through the jungle. If you were to go through an open highway, I guarantee you'd probably get, I don't know, closer to 50. But like I said, this PC, this PC, at least in this game, needs a little bit more performance. All right, okay, can this computer run Fortnite? Absolutely, here's how. Here are the graphics settings I have. And the trick is to set the rendering mode to performance mode. And there, we can have these. That view distance set to epic for that slightly advantageous view distance advantage. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play for a little bit. Anyways, look at the FPS meter on the top left. If you like that, then this computer could be for you. If I had to predict though, I'm gonna get immediately squashed. In fact, I almost wanna put a counter, not a counter, put a timer right now on screen. Oh, never mind. Never mind, gentlemen. I got one. Anyways, I am a uh, one and zero right now. That is great. Probably still gonna get jumped. They had a portals to this game? Oh, my 2 0? 2 0 maybe? If you build, I swear. I said I was gonna get jumped, and I did. In one hit. Who knew? And that's a score. Let's go. All right, okay. If you haven't catched, this is Rocket League. Uh, let me see if I can quickly show you my graphics settings. This definitely can run at a pretty good frame rate. MLLA for anti aliasing, quality. Render detail is also quality, but it's set to custom. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Let's see if we can get one more goal. Ooh. I don't know how people do this game, man. <laughs> oh my, how did I do that? Let's look at the replay. Yeah, so look at me, I just hit it whimsically, you know? Like, I'm like, all right, whatever. How did this happen? Oh no. <laughs> hey, I said I was gonna get another goal and I did. And uh, what frame rate are we getting right now? Like 70-ish? Oh, no! Oh, I don't care. I'm leaving. Okay, we are in Warzone. I am really interested to see how well this game does. And, uh, ooh, yeah, we're at already in fire. Uh, I have no weapons. This is terrible. I'm just going to go back here. I'll show you guys my game settings in a little bit. But right now, we're getting just at 60 frames per second. And the frame times don't look too terrible as well. 70, 65, 69, 67, 69. Not too terrible. Does it look the best? No. But is the frame rate above 60? Absolutely. Most of the time. Hey, all right, time to provide some content. Let's go. I just need to get into one gunfight and then that's, that's probably gonna be it, guys. <laughs> These are pretty brief. Just look at the top left, see if you like the frames per second. And if you like it, great. If you don't, then look at my other PC build guides that are more expensive. $400 computer running Warzone 2 in a dogfight at about 60 frames per second. There's my boy behind me getting headshots on a $400 computer at low graphics. Oh, nope. Another headshot on a $400 computer at low graphics. Who said you needed a $3,000 computer to be good? This is what the game chose for me as well. These were the optimized settings. But at 1080p, we have FSR 1.0 turned on. Set to performance, anti-aliasing is filming SMAA2X, 
at low quality, and then pretty much very low, 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 the lowest possible, and all the motion blur at the bottom is turned off. So yeah, you can get damn near close to a 60 FPS experience. Not bad. And there you have it. That is the gaming performance of this computer. And now let's finish out the video with my final thoughts on this $400 gaming PC build. So the performance is not entirely spectacular. It really varies on the game. I think when it comes to most esports based titles like Rocket League, Apex Legends to an extent, Valorant, League of Legends, Fortnite using the performance API, CSGO, you could even run Modern Warfare 2 if you wanted, just you gotta do some black magic. This computer can definitely run games, just the graphical fidelity will vary based off the graphical intensity of the title. Regardless, it can still run games, even Cyberpunk 2077, albeit at a low frame rate at the lowest possible graphic settings. Regardless though, this is a starter computer, so you can upgrade on this over time because the peripherals and components in this computer can handle that. For instance, if you wanted to throw in any graphics card of your choice, whether it be an NVIDIA, AMD, or even Intel graphics card, this computer can support it. And even the case, I'm actually really surprised by how good of a value this Gambius case is, because you get those two front RGB fans and a rear 120 millimeter fan, and this can all be hooked up to your motherboard without that many issues. And you still have plenty of clearance as well here for most graphics cards, other than maybe a 4090 and a 4080, but are you really gonna be looking at getting those graphics cards for this sort of system? You're probably gonna build a new PC from scratch. But like an RX 6600, 3060 Ti, even an Intel Arc GPU will be totally fine in the system when you do get that extra money to upgrade to an actual dedicated graphics cards. Moving on from the integrated graphics of the 5600G. So all in all, not a terrible computer and a pretty value focused one, especially with that 5600G, which I'm really happy to see with that B450 motherboard that supports it out of the box. So that's all I gotta say for this build video. And once again, all of the parts that I talked about in this video can be found in the description below so you can build this computer yourself. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Skyrable Channel, signing out.